Welcome in to KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week. Timpadogas football presented by Brent Brown Toyota and brought to you by Heidemann and Associates as we've got a great Region 8 matchup coming up for you tonight. The Salem Hill Skyhawks on the road to take on the Timpanogos Timberwolves. Thank you for joining us, everyone. My name is Dane Stewart. Please be joined by Eric Litzer. Eric, late in the year, Week 9, great matchup atop Region 8. What an what a absolutely beautiful night, perfect night for football. And if you've ever seen the movie Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, this is going to be an absolutely amazing game between these two Region 8 opponents. This kickoff into the end zone. We uh, look. We start with Timbinogus. It's senior night. This is a group coming in. They're 6-2 and two overall, 3-1 and one in region play. Been really impressive. They're healthy. They're clicking. There's a lot of options for this T-Wolf yeah, offense. Absolutely. I mean, they've scored 311 points, which leads Region 8 so far this year. Absolutely, they can they can hurt you with the pass. They can hurt you with the run. It's incredible what they can do. We'll get to see that Timpanogos offense on this opening drive. As in the shotgun, they're going to flail this one out. This is Luke Livingston turning up field on the sideline. Luke Livingston, good pickup for the senior to start things off. You know, what an absolutely great way to start this game. Just get a little pass on the perimeter and allow your athletes to use their legs. Now they're going tempo. Yeah, quickly to Livingston again. Boy, he's got blockers set up too. Livingston up to the 45, lower in the pads. You mentioned tempo. They're moving. Absolutely. Now a quick, quick pass to the outside on the other side. And again, tempo. This was one thing. We talked about Salem Hills before the game. They said they go fast. Penalty flag here on the run. As this is uh, Easton Bretzing. We'll call his name a lot tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he has rushed for 11 touchdowns so far this year. He's super, super athletic. He can catch the ball as well. Has 29 catches for another two touchdowns. And he is a workout warrior. He squats over 450 pounds. And, you know, we're in the Halloween season. Easton messaged me and said that he loves Swedish fish. Wow. Yeah. How about that? You, you know, um, well, I got a Swedish fish story. We'll hold that one for later. I, a lot of Swedish fish go out on Halloween. I wonder if he's going to dress up this year. Did he give you that intel? He did not no. give you that intel. All right. All right. The penalty flag was a hold. It'll back up Timpanogos. It'll be first down. And 19 here for the T-Wolves as uh, this is going to be kept by Chase Riggs. We didn't get a chance to talk about the senior quarterback, but he's been spectacular. He's back, and he's running this offense he well. Has. I mean, he's passed for 14 second, touchdowns so far this, this season. Nearly 1,700 yards. He commands the offense, as Coach Heath told us before yep. the game. Quick throw here. Oh, and that one nearly intercepted. It made its way through. Boy, what a catch that time by Gabe Graff. Beautiful catch and good coverage. I mean, there, there wasn't any issue there with actual coverage, and it brings up a, a short third down. Yeah, boy, they've dug out of what was first and 19. This is impressive. They'll go on the ground, and they'll pick up the first down with Bretzing. You know, it's another three. interesting fact Good Bretzing mentioned, I asked him, I said, do you like to run around people or run over people? And he said, you know, I, yeah, I like to run over people. <laughs> well, senior night, they said his nickname was The Beast. It was The Beast. And they talked about a bowling ball as well. I think that was him. This thrown into flat, caught, lost the footing, but a nice it's reception there by Dash McCann. McCann. Yeah, what's beautiful about this team is they spread the ball out. They have five, five different receivers that have caught the ball uh, or, or caught 20-plus passes. That's, that's impressive. It's good balance. Really good balance. Really, both these offenses have good balance. We'll talk about that when Salem Hills gets it. But it's been, uh, look, the underneath game for Timpanogos on this opening drive. Uh, Bretzing here looking left side. Boy, how about the patience there by the Beast taking it inside the 30. You know, it was interesting before the game and talking to Coach Heats, he talked about, you know, we gotta, we got to be physical. Yeah. And we heard the same thing from Salem Hills as well. we got to be physical. So who's going to win the trenches? That was one thing, you know, you've got to know lineman heart. You talked about that with both coaches before the game. Is a little screen here and able to slip through tackle was Cash McCann. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That was pretty hey, miraculous to do that. Hey, tremendous pursuit by Salem Hills there. The Great play. open field tackle. It's hard when you got receivers that are that Thank slippery you know. to, to make open field tackles like that. Nine and a half to go here. Opening quarter, opening drive for the T-Wolves. They do say a loss of about a half yard 
on that first down play. Empty backfield, this ball out quickly, caught for a gain of four. It'll be third and long, and it whistles like here. A possible flag on the play. Yep. There is a flag after yeah, the right play. at that line of scrimmage. Eric, you were on it. You know, both both coaches again talked about discipline. They talked about mistakes. They talked about penalties. They haven't made a lot of them, and they're hoping that hey, emotions won't be too high. Yeah. That you know, they make the non-effort type of mistakes. We await the call here. This looks like it's going to go against the home side. And that does indeed look to be the case. So penalty here, that's from the uh, original line of scrimmage. Looked to be a five-yarder. I didn't see the indication. That was kind of a weird signal for me. I'd... So it'll be third down and boy, 16 here. So that's a loss of down penalty if that down marker is correct. Boy, and yeah, movement. Livingston kind of had a bit of hitch in the leg there and going to be penalized here for the false start. Yeah, man, he's going to want that back. False start against the people. You know, it was one of the tough things we talked about senior night. And this group, Chase and uh, Brett Singh, and Liv- like this is the face of Timonogos football and it's senior night out. Like you just wonder how yeah. you control those emotions, oh, right? There's a lot of emotions. You've been dreaming about this. You've been thinking about it. Sometimes you just get a little bit too emotional. Yeah. They did correct it to second down. That down marker was wrong. So it's second down here in 21. Uh, shotgun again here for Riggs coming near side. Well, underneath for Bretzing and just slipped through his hands. Yeah, just slightly, slightly behind, but also definitely a, a, a catch that, that Bretzing has proven he can make. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a frustrating one. You, you have an opportunity to gain back some of those yards, get back to a third and 10, third and 12. And this is this definitely falls into the game plan of Salem Hills. Yes. Uh, especially on first and second down, you know, definitely ensuring they don't, you know, get many yards, forcing them into the long third downs. Just a three down front here for the Eagles or for the Skyhawks. They're going to throw back, backside. Oh, what a catch. What a catch by Timonogos on third and 21. It's Gabe Graff with a first down to the 11. What a beautiful play. Little crossing pattern. And another. Throwing back across the field. Something you normally don't do. First down, looking end zone, Livingston, and he tipped it to himself. Touchdown, Tim and Ogus. Luke Livingston can do it all. Luke Livingston proving he's one of the absolute Luke best in the state with the touchdown. Beautiful touch pass, corner of the end zone. Luke tips it to himself. He's able to bring it in and get those feet in. That is, that is not, that's not easy. They had third and 21. <laughs> they scored. Yeah. yeah, it was like third in a city, city block. And they yeah. convert. Wow. Point after. This hold is up. And it is good. An 11 yard touchdown pass. Riggs to Livingston. Timpanoga strikes first. Zero on your feet. T Wolves, it's fight song time. What an opening drive. We talked about, you know, coaches talk about not wanting to make mistakes, but my goodness, man, a couple of situations didn't look good for Timpanogos, and they find a way out of it. Yeah, and again, they're so high-powered with respect to their their offense. Again, 311 points to lead Region 8 in scoring, and they march right down the field under really, really difficult circumstances, proven that they can overcome those penalties yeah and when you've got somebody like Luke Luke Livingston and and some of their other athletes again athletes yeah well initially I thought that ball was overthrown right and then Livingston yeah it's like oh he's gonna tip and be just you know just not be able to bring it no it's just like they practiced it almost he practiced it and and he's got some length he's got some length to him yep and one of the things you love about Luke Livingston this might First time seeing him in person. You see a lot of highlights. That kid can do it all, literally. Like, oh. they played him at quarterback, oh. receiver. Like, can do whatever you need him to on the field. Absolutely. I mean, he's got he's got 106 yards rushing as well. Three touchdowns on the ground. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. He's putting up points all over. Brett Singh, the kicker. Hey, how about oh. that, huh? That running back, that cleared the uh, the field goal there. You know, he talked to me about how he loves the weight room. 
And he was working out in the off season at least one day a week, or excuse me, one time a day, and he said sometimes twice a day. He was doing two a days. And uh, he said he's squatting 450 pounds. Yeah, he proved it right there with yeah. that, that kickoff. No kidding. That's a that's a good lower body strength. My goodness. So we'll get the first drive of the game now for the Salem Hills offense. And look, Salem Hills, this has been a, a team that they've had some blowouts. They've had some close games. Been an impressive year. We'll see if they can find their consistency tonight. Ledger Holmes, just a freshman at quarterback. He'll dump that underneath but couldn't haul it in. Was intended for Roper K. Yeah, Ledger is so athletic. He really can do it all. I mean, he's been, he's played quarterback, played running back. He has had seven interceptions on defense as a, as a defensive back. He's an all-around athlete, and he's 14 years old. That's crazy, isn't it? You know, he, he attributes his dad, Mike, um, for believing in him and training him and working with him. He loves his dad. Second down, Holmes under center. He'll hand off, looking for some ground. And, boy, that's a nice run right up the middle. Is, uh, is that number 21? Yeah, it was K on the carry. Roper he K makes up for that drop. Yeah, Roper K leads leads. Leads the team with 630 yards rushing. Already has six touchdowns right up the middle. And, and, and you know, as Coach Higginson said, he's, he, he, he really grinned when I asked him about the offensive line. Yeah. He just talked about how they work together and their strength and their understanding of this offense. My apologies. It's third and one. I thought it was good for a first. It was not. Third and short. K okay, again, looking right side. He'll pick it up here. Yeah, you're right. He talked about their physicality. He liked that aspect of their offense. So that yeah, we like us up front. This physical O line. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that's very Good interesting, as you it. mentioned First earlier, about these two teams is the balance. I mean, they have 1,200 yards passing, 1,200 yards rushing. Talk about balance. Yeah, no kidding. We talk about uh, you know record for them in August. Salem Hills coming in similar. Six and two overall, four and one in region. Both these teams have a shot still to region. Tyler needs some help to do that, but look, they're in position to do it. But this is a must-win game if those hopes are to remain intact. Yes. First down, shotgun, and that throw, boy, that might have been deflected, but still came out clean. Is caught there as that was Miller with the reception. To beat the Christian Miller. Yeah, you talk about Eight the region. Two. They're obviously trying to stay within striking distance of Provo. Second down leads, from the thirty-six. Leads the region, of course. But again, as I mentioned earlier, the Thunderdome, two teams enter, <laughs> one team leads with a win. Uh, that's what made this matchup so interesting to me, at least, was it was, hey, there's still a lot on the line late in the year, and the nature of the offenses should be a fun one. Is a little toss here. Oh, how about the pursuit? Nay, nay, bursting through was Tyler Hunter, the senior, coming up with a big TFL. You know, one of the statistics that really stood out to me, Dane, is the Lock fact that Timpanogos has 64 tackles for loss. 64. That's in eight games. That's unbelievable. That's crazy. That's a good note, man. Yeah. So how do you try to attack that? I mean, like, as an, as an offense, right? Is there something you can try to use their pursuit against them? Absolutely. And you could do that through screen plays, um, whether that be perimeter screens or right up the middle. Attack them up the middle. That was working. Third and 13. And running out of time. Holmes going to tuck it. He's got a lot of yards to pick up. Does a nice job. Gets about nine, eight, maybe nine. Going to be short. It'll be fourth and five here. And boy, how aggressive are you on the opening drive? Man, I'll tell you, that kid is an athlete. Look at his, his, his ability to make something of nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, even in those difficult situations, he's able to look, keep his eyes downfield, but when things break down, he takes it and runs and, and picks up something. Salem Hill's on to punt here. And I think this might be... Miller to kick this away as back fair catch signaled for and taken by Tyler Hunter at his own 32. So the Timonogos defense does his job. Second drive of the game coming up here for the T-Wolves. If you're that Salem Hills defense, Eric, any adjustments you try to make early here? Or? Yeah, and, and in fact, Coach Higginson mentioned pressure, pressure, pressure. you got to get pressure on the quarterback and the ball was coming out so quickly on that first drive. Plus, they were playing tempo. tempo. I mean, guys are gassed. Yeah. It's hard to constantly pin your ears back and, and 
and get pressure on the quarterback. A diamond to the bottom here, so your single coverage at the top. This is Livingston. Boy, look at him just navigate traffic, picking up three, but it's a hard-earned three as we got whistles here again. Yeah, on that, on that first down, they're just trying to get some yards, get some breathing room. Second down and seven. That was weird. They stopped the clock there for a gain of three. I'm not quite certain. I thought there was a flag or something. I believe a helmet came off. Oh, okay. All right. See, four eyes are better than two. Right there. Second down. They'll throw out McCann. Cash up the sideline, lowering the pass to the 40. You know, I have to mention something that that Coach Heaps mentioned about his team and the selflessness. You saw in that play wide receivers blocking downfield. That's selfless. That's one of the things, I mean, you talk about getting the screenplay going. That's critical. Oh, how about the little fake? And that throws just behind McCann. Boy, they had that set up beautifully and just missed it. That was a beautiful double move. Just couldn't couldn't quite connect on that one. Ah, fourth and two, huh? Why not? Offense staying on the field here on fourth and short for the T-Wolves. They got to get to the 42. Oh, and Salem Hills jumped. Flags on the field. This is going to be an interesting call. Did they... Did somebody on the offense move a little? Twitch? Nope. Nope. So the penalty will give the first down here to the T-Wolves. Yeah, and you don't want to see that. Give it up for cheap, cheap first down. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you stop them. Yeah, I mean, you're that close to getting off the field, getting your offense back. Instead, you give them a fresh set. On the ground, Brett seeing up the middle. Boy, into a pile there. Number of Skyhawks there, including Corbin Yoder. Yeah, fantastic defense there. Clogging the gaps, filling those, stopping Easton. Quick throw and out of bounds almost immediately there. Josh Graff will pick up four yards. You know, it's interesting. Chase Riggs is, is getting the ball out so quickly. It'll be interesting to see if Salem Hills adjusts a little bit more. I mean, now they're playing a little bit more press coverage. Yeah, everyone's within five yards here. Livingston. My goodness. How do you how do you guard him? You know, that's called strong hands. I was surprised Salem Hills had everybody up. I'm thinking you take a shot here, but fantastic coverage. There's trust by Riggs and Livingston, that's for sure. They came across again. So this is going to be another five yards here going to cost the Skyhawks. It's not the way to start the early downs, giving them an easy five. Boy, does this tempo look like it's maybe confusing the Salem Hills defense? You know, I believe so. And, and you know, maybe it is, again, some emotion. Offside against the Skyhawks. And also trying to predict the stand. And, well, and, and, and you can't, you just can't do that as a defender. And I think some of the formations too, they've been very, very differentiated. I mean, here, look at all the, the movement, shifting, right? The yeah, movement. yeah. So first and five. Oh, not right through the fingertips. Pressure gets it away, and that's within Livingston. What a smart what is move! It? Yeah. What a smart play. Pass incomplete. Intended Save for those Livingston. yards. Uh, that's a tricky one. You know, often as a quarter, you got to get it within the vicinity. And when you got Luke 2, or when you got, yeah, Luke 2, right? We'll call him Luke 2. When sure. you got Luke 2, just throw it near him and he'll get in the vicinity. Second and five here. Brett Singh. Oh, how about the vision? That's a nice cutback yeah. for gain of four. You know, whenever I see <laughs> whenever I see a run like that, I just think of <laughs> Talk about a beast. No kidding. Third and a yard. It's been a favorable situation for Timonogos in this first quarter. 3.45 to go here in our opening frame. Bretzing up the middle. I think he's got it. He does. You know, Salem Hills, they've got to settle down. They can't hurt themselves. Yeah. Bretzing up the middle for a two-yard game. You know, it's been interesting. Both these Good defenses have played three-man front. And with Tim and Ogis being able to run the ball like they have, you wonder if that's going to force Salem out of it. But the problem is if you do go out of it, then you you lose coverage, right? That's true. First down. Looking for Livingston. That one is overthrown. Okay, on that one, Salem Hills did bring the pressure. Break back incomplete. Causing for Livingston. 
Second causing Riggs to, to throw it probably just a tad, a tad early. And again, these two teams are so balanced. Again, you stop one, you stop the pass, they can run it on you. You stop the run, they can they can throw the ball. Second down. Oh, looking for a little wheel route here. That is caught down to the 12-yard line. And Timonogos again inside the red zone. What a, what a throw. Tremendous touch. A 17-yard gain. And another. And again, back to tempo. Yep, that was Dash McCann with the reception. High snap. Corralled. Look at end zone. Livingston. And that overthrown and a penalty flag coming in here in the end zone. Complete, but there is a flag on the play. This looks Trying to, to be, play tight yeah. coverage there. I didn't see too much, but, you know, wrestling right the there defense. And, and throw the flag. Yeah, they called they the, call the holding. Yep, they did call holding. So this will, uh, I think, half the distance in this scenario, I believe. And not an automatic half first down. But it will put it inside the 10. To the 6. Four. They'll give it. Brett Singh on the ground. There's the piece lower in the pads. He does. Brett Singh up the middle. Salem Hills. Three yard line. Quick to the ball. But Brett Singh with that power. Pistol formation on second and less than a yard. Brett Singh gets the momentum into the end zone. Touchdown, Timonogos. On that. Three yards up the middle. On that drive, we really saw the power of that offensive line take over. Fantastic run. Parker Harvey to attempt the P. He was not going to be denied. No. Nothing well, was stopping him. Well, that's where right now it feels like that opening drive, a lot of screen passes, a couple over the top late. This one, it was a ground attack. And, boy, Tim Anogas has this defense right where they want it. Yeah. Kick is up. It's good. 14-0, yeah. you know, Tim Anogas. And, and, frankly, Tim Anogas has settled down on that first drive. Yeah, they had some penalties. The they, they had he some long, third and longs. And were able to overcome those by feet. passing the ball. Yeah. This it was some some great balance. I want to take a moment and thank our sponsors here of KSL Sports Rewinds Game of the Week. I want to remind you, Heidemann and Associates is a flat rate law firm that's completely focused on you. Get a free consultation by calling 801-472-7742 or go to utah.law to find the law office nearest you. We also want to thank Advanced Windows. They're running their fall window sale right now. You can get $2,000 off 10 windows or more plus 60% zero interest financing is available. This is a limited time only. Call 801-850-9100 or visit them online at advancedwindowsusa.com. It's first quarter. It's still early. Eric, how big is this drive for Salem Hills? Oh, this is absolutely huge. You, want to, you definitely need to put some points on the board. You have the highest scoring offense, again, in Region 8. They can score at will. you got to be able to, to put some points on the board. Turn the tide here. It's interesting because you talk about strength against strength. This is a, a good scoring defense for Salem Hills. They don't give up, up a lot of points. And down in a 14 nothing hole here early as this kick into the end zone. Off the crossbar. He's going to be disappointed. <laughs> he got off the crossbar for a touchback. Everyone was hoping for <laughs> three on that baby. Hey, A for accuracy, right? Absolutely. Anyone can give, kick it through. We're playing a little three bar here. He, he called that. Yeah, right? yeah. No doubt. No doubt. He's like, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say watch this around Dusty. He might lose it. That's a, that's harkening back to old times. Girl State Tournament. Uh, anyway. This drive starting at the 20 for Salem Hills. Uh, Ledger Holmes starting in the shotgun here. Freshman will hand off. Okay, nice run. Well, he's been good. Yeah, absolutely. And you you asked earlier how how can you you know hey, work right around line, some of the, the challenges that the Tippenogas defense pr provides? First and ten, Salem Hills. Run north and south. Yeah, uh, they've absolutely proven that in the successful plays. Anything out to the perimeter, Tippenogas has so much speed. Yeah, they're able to pursue and and stop Salem Hills. So. 
anything up the middle, it'll be interesting to see if we, we, we see some screen plays too and also some quarterback runs. 2.20 to go here, opening quarter, first down. They'll run between the tackles again with Kay, and again, it's a good run. He'll pick up seven here. Again, as I mentioned, hey, right up the, the middle, three. beautiful blocking. As, as a former O-lineman, what's the message to you when it's like, hey, we're running right behind you? Oh, you have the biggest grin on your face <laughs> because especially for linemen, you don't want to receive uh Punishment. You want to be aggressive, you right? You want to give yeah. punishment. And so when you run the ball as a lineman, you're dishing out the punishment. Second and short here. They'll go under center. Oh, edge pressure here. Little bootleg. Boy, that's a nice job by Holmes, able to get out of it. He'll pick up the first down. That's an athletic play by the young man. Athletic play, 14 years old. Roger Holmes keeps it's still, it, down to the that blows my mind. And, and you know, major kudos first down. To, to Coach Higginson who – trusted in yeah. a freshman yeah you don't see that oh no, it's you amazing don't. well and, and even to, to have like the confidence be like yeah i trust myself yes. that the moment's not going to overwhelm him that he's ready and that he'll perform and all that has worked and look give credit to ledger give credit to coach higginson it's worked for salem hills yes first down again to minogue showing pressure here We'll cut back and a gain of six here again for Roper K. You know, tremendous agility there, beautiful cutback. That's why you do the agility work in the offseason. It paid off there. The, the gap was completely plugged. He was able to dance his way out of that and find, find an opening and squeeze through it and pick up a good five yards on first down. And our final minute here of this opening quarter, Salem Hills across the 50 for the first time tonight. Holmes under center. Boy, bringing the house here. Timpanogos. K. there's nowhere to go. The blitz worked for Timpanogos. Yeah, the blitz worked. And you've seen it on the last three or four or five plays. Timpanogos definitely bringing the heat, bringing the pressure. I mentioned earlier there are 64 tackles for loss. They also have 22 sacks. Whew, that is impressive. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Clock here to 10. Looks like Salem Hill's going to be content to take an extra minute and think about this big third and 10. End of the first quarter. quarter. Tip and Ogus leading Salem Hills. You're watching KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week with Tip and Ogus football presented by Brent Brown and brought to you by Heidemann and Associates. Welcome back. Start of the second quarter. Dane Stewart, Eric Litster with you. Is this one no go? You know, it's definitely the right play that was called. They're trying to trying to call a screen pass. Ledger throws it. Tries to throw it over the defender. Defender with the tip there, and you have a punting situation. But what that did do. And Coach Higginson talked about it before the game. He said, look, we want to run the ball. We want to control possession. We want to let our defense get some time to adjust. It gave your defense some time on the sideline. It did. It definitely did. A couple first downs there. They were moving the ball. That's a nice punt. We'll take a Skyhawk bounce down to the 10. Be the longest field of the night for Tim Benogas, but a penalty flag back at the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, let's down see to the 10-yard the line. See the call here now. now. First and 10, t will Talking about Salem Hills defense, one of the things that really stood out is you talk about a wow factor. I mean, I know you were kind of wow about 22 sacks, like Tip and Ogus. Salem Hills has 21 interceptions. 21 interceptions. In eight games. In eight games. So if, if, if they're going to stop or slow down this Tip and Ogus team, First you gotta, ten, you gotta create five. turnovers, well, and that's where give credit to Tim Monogas. They aren't stretching the field a lot. You want to know why? Hey, underneath is a safe play, right? It is a safe play, absolutely. And they know that 
Salem Hills is going to bring it as well and going to be physical. I mean, they have 17 sacks on the season. Time so, out, Salem Hills. And we had a penalty. The penalty was on Salem Hills. And uh, so it's going to be half the distance to the goal. And the Skyhawks here taking a timeout early in this second quarter. Interesting. Not quite certain if uh, maybe a moment of importance or what. But we'll... Uh, We'll take one more moment. I want to thank our, our other sponsors, Igloo Outfitters. Look, it's a beautiful night tonight. We don't have too many more of these in the state of Utah. It's the coziest wearable sleeping bag, and they've got you covered during those chilly days and nights. Worry no more about the weather. Watch your favorite team in comfort with Igloo Outfitters. Go to Igloo Outfitters. That's I-G-L-U, IgluOutfitters.com, and enter Rewind for $20 off. Never miss the moments. With Igloo Outfitters, I haven't tried one yet, Eric, but Dusty has, and he said that that puppy is warm. Hey, you know, have you ever been on a camping trip where you were freezing cold? Yes. <laughs> is there anything yes. That, that's Nothing worse. worse. No, no. I told you before the game, I'm the biggest wimp when it comes to cold. So I can't wait. First down here, Tim Benogas starting at the five. And I said the penalties on Salem Mills. It was on Tim Benogas. That's my bad. The uh, quarter switch caught me off guard as they and run Robinson here to the outside. The right and a nice gain there for Robinson of seven. Yeah, beautiful run on the right perimeter. The and yard line Robinson has also been a key contributor two. this year as well. Here's that tempo once again. They'll stay on the ground. And they go right back with Robinson. Robinson Not much there. Right Maybe a yard. Gain of a yard. Bringing up third and, and, third, second, and third, one. third and short. Still tempo. This is where, again, if you're Salem Mills, if you get off the field, you're going to have great field position. Great field position. Got to stop him here. Pistol formation. You think he's going to Bretzing? Nope. Oh, and that one was in between a pair of receivers. Boy, was shy of Graf and over really McCann. Graf, yeah, the, had McCann. Yeah, the play, the play was, was there. Great play design. You had, you had that fake handoff, that rollout pass just a, just a little off. Uh, fourth and one at your own 15. Do they snap it here? They don't, right? Salem Hills has jumped twice or two yeah. or three times already. That is, I'm like, all right, you cannot jump here. There's no way you take that play at the Absolutely 11. Absolutely not. So a timeout here taken by Tim Minogas, probably wisely taken. All right, Dane Stewart, Eric Litzer, in case you didn't know, and I gave Eric a heads up, relationship with Dusty Litzer. Give us your best Dusty Litzer story. Oh, man. Dusty Litzer, well, I'll tell you this right now. I absolutely love him. Do you know he is a workout warrior? Did you know I, that? I do, yeah. Like, like this This is somewhat recent. I mean, he always no, I know, worked I know. out. But, no, it, it's but a different is, level. This is a whole whole different level. He's training in a powerlifting gym, a, a strength training gym. Next week, he's going for a bench of 400 pounds. Hey, my money. I can't on. even imagine that. I, I can't even it. imagine that. You know, so every weekend we get together, we film the show, and he's always like, Here's what I benched this week, and it's it's close. It's been close to 400. It's like he's gonna break that when he does. Yeah, boy, how about this offense on the field? Oh, and Tim Benogas this time moves. I don't think that's what they wanted. Not not what they wanted. This may change change what they do. Obviously, on fourth down yeah. and, and six, if that's if that's the call. Yeah, in fact, uh, Salem Mills already dropping a young man back to receive this punt. So now you're going to be punting out of your own end zone. Of course, uh, you know, Dusty and Eric, we talked about, uh, you know, cousin, a family member on Tim Anogas, Tage Litster, uh, tore up his knee, senior year, was honored tonight as a part of senior night, but has stuck with this team. Senior Knight has been here all year long supporting his teammates here at Tim and They try to close things out tonight in week nine at home. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing when you you have a senior that might be injured but is still with the team. Yeah. Spending time with them, coaching them up, mentoring those that may be now taking taking your position. Yep, yep. 
always hard to have an injury take away your senior year, right? No one wow. ever wishes that. But, uh, young man, we certainly wish him the best on the mend and know he'll come back stronger from it, even if uh, it won't be suited up for Tim and Ogus again. Skyhawk taking over at the 42 of the T-Wolves. Oh, that one trouble. Intercepted. Threw into double coverage, and Timpanoga is able to come up with the first turnover of the night thanks to MJ Yosefa. You know, and that's one, that, that is one area that, that the Skyhawks have struggled with. They've had 16 interceptions so far this season. You can't have that. Well, and that's where we talk about pressure. That pressure forces a freshman into a quick throw, a difficult throw, and Yosefa was there. There is a penalty marker here on the field and looks to be a personal foul on the Skyhawks. So uh, that will not change the outcome of the play, but they just pointed a first down for Salem Hills. So it had to be on Timonogus, right? Indication was incorrect. It was a personal foul against the T-Wolves. Yeah. Okay, so, boy, that is huge. That uh, definitely changes things. Yeah, the personal foul was on Timpanogos, so it will negate the interception, and it will move 15 yards for the Skyhawks to the T-Wolf 27. First down. On the ground, nowhere to go. Boy, what pursuit. Yeah, tremendous pressure right up the middle. Rover K brought down by Brighton Tate behind the line. Brighton Tate there with the TFL for this Timberwolf D. Yeah, and he's had several. In fact, four-yard loss brings up second down and 14. He's had eight and a half sacks so far this season. He's had 17 tackles for loss. Talk about guys living behind the line of scrimmage. And we've seen it here in this first half. On second down, Holmes running out of time. Oh, and able to slither out of it. No, they do say he was down. He thought he stayed up, but the officials there to call him down. Back at the 39 yard line. That's Jesse. Well, that was close. Again, you got it. That, that pursuit. Ledger's eyes are downfield. Takes it back to the. He's trying to feel the pressure. 39 yard line. He was going to be able to escape. The defender gets the jersey. Third and 21. And third and 21 now for Salem Hills. We talked with Coach Higginson before the game. He said, look, we got a good kicker. We trust his leg. How many yards are you looking for here if you're thinking field goal? You know, the, they, they're long for the season is 42 yards. So they definitely need a few, a few more yards here to get really comfortable, I would say, get into, into his range. And we got to delay a game here as that back judge watching that play clock closely. Did we get a timeout in? The uh, line judge running in. I think that will indeed be the call. Yes, timeout here taken by Salem Hills. We'll uh, preserve the field position on third and long. We'll see what they do when we come back. Welcome back. Third and 21, and Price is being thrown into the student section to try to get them loud here on this third down and here on this T-Wolf D. Yeah, and watch, watch for Tim and Ogus to bring the pressure. Third and, third and 21. Third and 21. We'll see what this Skyhawk offense has in mind. Looking deep. Well, they got a man, and that one broken up. Heck of a defensive play made by Tyler Hunter. Yeah, and on that play, Timpanogos did the opposite. They, they only brought three, dropped everybody back into coverage. Great safety play there to stay stay behind the receiver and break that break that pass up. If 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 not, you're looking you're definitely looking at a first down there. This would be a 56 yard try. There's not a lot of kickers that were going 56 yard tries. So Salem Hill is on to punt here. Maybe Brody Laga at uh, Mountain Ridge. Well, I was there and watched him kick a 59 Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the nicknames for him are numerous. Le- <laughs> Legatron. <laughs> Leg- That's a good one. Legzilla. I like Legatron. He's, he's an animal. <laughs> it's something else. When you see him kick, it's like, oh, my goodness. That ball looks like it's coming out of a cannon. You know, you look at all of the levels the high school level, the college level, the professional level. 
you don't see many many at the professional level attempting 59 yard field yeah. goals and, and knocking it through and it was it was true right down the middle yeah he's special we had a chance to talk with his head coach earlier this year there's uh, that kid that's a special player Tim and Ogus on first down they look to run a couple yards up the middle there you know good good defense there by Salem Hills Clog in the middle. Ethan Brenting down Stay to the true to, to, to their, Second their gap, gap control. Second and eight here. You've got eight and a half to go here in our opening half. And this one on the ground, lost his footing. And Brenting, you can see he was disappointed in that he one. He was. He was. He slipped there. He had a few more yards left in him. Did you play on turf? Never played on turf. Only Never grass. Had that okay. Experience. Okay. Only grass. And we had plenty of muddy fields, wet fields <laughs> yeah, right. especially this time of year. Yep. Plenty of snowy fields. That's one of the things I miss. You know, like you get like the whole like muddy brown oh, jerseys. Man. and Third and long. Little screen play. Here's Bretzing. Got one man around. He's got a first down and more. Bretzing able to take it up to the 31-yard line as they convert a third and long. Yeah, there you go with Bretzing being a dual threat. You know, he has well over 20 catches game. this season. Good for another. Beautiful Team screen low. play. Let the Salem Hills pursuit get to you. Dump it off. First down. Bretzing on the ground here through the middle, picking up eight, maybe nine. Boy, what a burst. Yeah, beautiful run right nine. up the middle. And that tempo, that tempo I think, is... Has, has been brilliant for Timpanogos. It's second and short here. The chain game can barely keep up with this T-Wolf offense. They'll throw it out. Here's Graf trying to work around these Skyhawk defenders. He'll pick up the first. Pass the beat to Graf. Good for another T-Wolf. Yeah, we're right back on it here for the T-Wolves. They'll throw out. Here's McCann, dash, able to surge across the 50. You know, beautiful, just the same play to the other side of the field, spreading that defense out. And, and here's what's interesting. You spread that defense out, out, and then you penetrate Second them right up the two. middle because they are spread out. Yeah. It was one of the things in talking with Coach Heaps before the game. He said, look, we can attack you a lot of different ways. You want to take this? We'll do that. You want to take that? We'll do this. Right. The right there's a lot of versatility yeah, in this offense. They're, they're, they're proving it. And again, Six yard game. there's no surprise as that how they put up 311 Whoa. points so far this season. Well, and you know the other incredible thing? You think about all the guys that run on, run off, different formations. I mean, it's like clockwork for these guys. First down. Had trips to the bottom. They'll run. This is to the top of the screen with Robinson. You know, Not much. Co Coach Heaps talked about... The influence of the two. seniors on Second this down. team, how they have, again, it's we, not me. Yeah. And they are helping those that, you know, may not get a lot of playing time and, and everybody's bought in. By the way, the T-Wolves helmet, A+. Plus. Down on the field looking at that, oh, yeah. Got to tip the cap to Tim Benogas here. It's a good look. They'll go right up the middle here on second down. Not a lot there for uh, Robinson. Maybe a pair. Bowling ball again. You start to see this Salem Hills points. defense do better against Final that run of game. Yeah, absolutely. The What's third, interesting about that helmet, is, as you and I found out, is, you know, Coach Heaps, he let the players choose. Yeah. How amazing is that, right? That's he awesome. let the seniors pick their, their fits. Awesome. Here's the thing. I like Luke Livingston. I like him even more after hearing that story. Oh, and that one nearly intercepted, but coming away with it is Graf. And Graf down the sideline. That went from he being a possible Graf interception to being a third and eight conversion for a first. But a penalty flag here back in the line of scrimmage. This might be coming back. Either. There is a flag on the play. Boy, that's one in film room. You're going to say, guys. We converted, yeah. and we took it away from ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, when, when when something like that happens, you have a, 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 a big gain, and then you get a penalty that takes you back 10 yards. Yeah. Third it's a killer. And 16. That's a spot penalty, so it'll be third and 16 here. You know, Timpanogos, though, has shown that they can overcome this. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> they had third and oh, 21 on a touchdown drive. Right. So, again, look at how everyone's up here for Salem Hills. 
A little toss back. Livingston, maybe double pass here. It's covered. Not much there. Oh, but coming back and make a grab and off to the races. To the 10 5 strike of the band. Touchdown, Timonogos. Absolutely beautiful. And Luke, Luke Livingston has thrown multiple touchdowns so far this season. In fact, he's thrown five touchdowns. That's his sixth. He's just an all around athlete. Here's and we mentioned how he was Parker a center Hardy fielder on the state championship team. Absolutely beautiful. Here's the crazy thing. We know Luke Livingston can throw. He's played quarterback yeah. this year. You see that double pass. It's covered. I mean, he just throws that to get rid of it. And it's like, it's a heck of a grab made down the field there by Graf. Defenders run into each other. And it when goes from, we got this covered, we got to stop, five, to being seven, seven for the T-Wolves. Yeah, it almost, it almost looked like a design pick play on that one to free Graf for the touchdown. So Luke Livingston doing... Well, showing that versatility as he's able to find Gabe Graff, the junior, for, a, yeah, we'll say a 46-yard touchdown. Well, I hope everybody at home has their popcorn, has their candy. We're getting ready for Halloween. Again, we did talk about a couple of the players. Led Ledger told me that his favorite candy is Twix. And then we've got Easton, whose favorite candy is Swedish Fish. Dane, what, what, what's your what's your go-to? Uh, well, I had a score bar before the game tonight, oh. but normally I'm a Twix guy. So a Twix guy. I'm a Twix guy. Well, wonderful. You it's, and Ledger have something yeah, in common there. It's two candy bars for the price of one. That's so, true. Well done. Is that how you looked at it as a kid? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mom, I got two. <laughs> no, that's actually a new fountain. I was a Skittles kid growing up, but I've matured into a Twix man. So. I was I was a Reese's peanut butter cup type of guy. I was love a big peanut butter. Yeah, love that chocolate. I was a big Reese's fan too. That's a it's a win. It is a win. Hey, this one the crossbar the other way. <laughs> We're getting a kicking display tonight. Absolutely. He, again, he's he's calling it. Twenty-one nothing. Tippin August five twenty-seven to go here. Opening half. There's been no stopping this team of offense. You know, there, there hasn't. And, you know, Coach Heaps, everything he said, it really is coming true. They've controlled the line of scrimmage. They, you know, they've, they've relied on some of, their, some of their key players that are just so athletic when they get the ball in their hands. And they're hurting you both on the run and the pass. And you look at this. I mean, it's uh, Tim and Ogus now loading up that box, recognizing, hey, Roper Case had success between the tackles. We can take that away. And here's a, a pull from Holmes, and he won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Holmes yeah, he could have just broken that up. Down for broken a that off a, outside a little bit more. He had some room there. So good, good, good play design. Didn't quite execute the way they, they, they drew it up. I mean, it just feels like right now Salem Hills hasn't been able to find much tonight outside of those runs. No, they the haven't. Middle. It really has been north and south. They haven't really been able to, to pass the ball as well with that pressure. Holmes looking to throw on second down. That out through the fingertips incomplete. Was looking the way of Court Stewart. You know, really the key, though, is, is – Tip and Hocus. Incomplete pass. They third are third and eleven. They're holding Salem Hills to third and long. Yeah. Second and second and a mile. I mean, you, you can't you can't keep playing behind the sticks. Time out on the field to convert on third and eleven, third and long. And in fairness. Salem Hills defense has held Tim and Ogus to those situations, too. t has just been able to convert it, crazily enough. Yeah, absolutely. We've got an injury here. We will step aside as they come out take a look at the injured Skyhawk player. We'll be back. You're watching Tim and Ogus football presented by Brent Brown, Toyota. Welcome back here. The injured Skyhawk player able to walk off. I think it might be 52. Hard to see from where we're at. But, uh, so good to see him walking off. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that, that, that's the key here. Well, I mean, we, we talk about, you know, Tage and, you know, young man, you, you lose a senior season, but any season, right? Like, you just hate to see injury. You love the sport. You love the competitiveness, the physicality. Sometimes it costs a, a price, and, and you, you never hope or want or desire that for anyone. No, you don't. 
It's one of the things Tibbenogas felt the injury bug early, and they've gotten healthy. And boy, when they're healthy, I mean, this offense looks as good as it can be. And they're dynamic. Third and long here for the Skyhawks. That throw caught. Well, that's good read. Good recognition. Big hit laid, but that pass was completed there to Christian Miller. It'll be a first down. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful pass again by a 14-year-old. Yeah. That was a laser. Absolutely laser. Unflappable. Yeah. You know, you hear that. It's thrown around a lot. But this is a 14-year-old. He's got pressure in the face. He delivers the ball. And, that you know, that wasn't a short little dump-off no. screen or dump-off pass. He had to stick in there. And you throw that a foot the other way, it's a pick, right? Like the pick. accuracy there is dialed in. Right. As they'll go here with K, and he'll pick up five, maybe six on yeah, the what carry. A, what a strong run. Breaks out of some of those arm tack, tackles. Roper and that's what you want on first down if you're, if you're Salem Hills. Second you can't and have second and 10, second and 12. Got to be able to pick up some decent amount of yards on first down, which they yeah. did there. And, and even you see that third down conversion. Well, hey, look, we're not going to load up the box, right? And now you've got a running lane for K where he can pick up some yards again. Yeah, and it keeps the defense on their heels. Right, right. You can't be one-dimensional in that case. Second down. Holmes running out of time, tripped up in the backfield, and this sack will be credited be to Brighton Tate. Yeah, Tippinogus gets home. They just keep working and working and working, never giving up. I love that. I yeah. absolutely love guys with motors that just never end. And and you talk about motors. Like, you see that pocket just not collapse, but there's no room. I mean, there's nowhere for Holmes to go. There's no room. It'll be third and eight here for Salem Hills. 3.20 to go. And Timpanogos really is doing a good job containing him, keeping yeah. him in the pocket because he has wheels. He can run the ball. He's a dual threat. Got to get to the 46 and a half. Pressure coming. Holm steps up. Ah, trying, but boy, again, just running out of space. And he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing else. Again, when you are relying on those patterns that take time to develop, Holmes brought down for you're going to have to stand there in the pocket. And because of that, you're going to run the risk of, you know, getting that pressure and, and, and taking the sack. Well, especially with the intensity Timonog is bringing, you don't have a lot of time back there. And I was just hoping Holmes wasn't going to stretch something on that play because <laughs> he was getting twisty and turned all sorts of different ways. This kick off the side of the foot in the air, fair catch taken at the 33. Yeah, he's definitely flexible there, man. It, it did look <laughs> like he, he did the split. Yeah. Yard by First and 10. Two. So 225 to go. Timonog is coming back out. 21 nothing. looking for more on senior night. They're aggressive here, right, Eric? Oh, you know what? Absolutely. I mean, they they put up 21 so far. They're probably mad that they had to punt it at one point <laughs> during the game. They yeah. probably have a mantra score on every drive. And especially we'll, we'll see if they go tempo again. It's worked well for them. Is our white hat having a quick conversation there with Coach Heaps. Coach, he's a young man, but, boy, he's got himself a bit of a program running here. Tim Minogue's done a great job. It's amazing, and he trusts his assistant coaches yep. as well. well Tim Minogue is starting this drive at the 33. we got our, our air traffic controller out there wearing the green vest and the headset. We just need the little orange sticks, right? <laughs> Bring it in for landing. <laughs> That's right. Pressure around the edge. Just a tad late throwing oh. and a yard long of Livingston. But, boy, Riggs took that yeah, one. Just yeah, out of the reach of Livingston. Well, there's your answer. Second down. Yeah, right? There's your answer, right? Yeah. They're, they're definitely not going to just go into halftime, you know, run the clock out, yeah. be content. Huh? It's uh, senior night. That's right, man. Second down. Motion across the formation. They'll come back with a screen and Bretzing. I want to touch low for him. Couldn't haul it in. Uh, I mean, on that play, Salem Hills brought the, brought the pressure. Although it was a screen play, good good play call. Just wasn't, wasn't executed. Third and ten here. To your point, you 
Probably got to play deep. Hey, if Aaron <laughs> Hills can stop him here and put some points yeah. on the board before halftime, you would say that would be a, a, a big win. That clock hasn't moved. I mean, 2.17 to go. Riggs, that pass off the mark. Intended there for Graf, and it's three and out here for Tippinogus. Yeah, first three and out of the game. You had some pressure in Riggs' face and just had to get rid of it just a little bit too early. The wide receiver was just coming out of his break. Couldn't quite get, quite get the ball. Here's speculation. You ready for this? Yeah. That first down, that one nearly blocked. Good pressure there as it's angled and takes a big Tippinogus bounce inside the 20. You think about that first down play. Riggs gets hit as he lets go of that. You wonder if that speeds up his mental clock a little bit. Absolutely. Because some of the timing just didn't quite look like it was there on second oh, without, and third. Without question. Um, you, you can't say that you know, getting hit time and time again doesn't speed up that internal play clock to, hey, I want to get rid of this ball so, so you can't hurt me. What was, uh, I know, you know, offensive line, we talked about that. What was your favorite play? What, what was it like, oh, yeah, baby, here we go? You know, we ran the veer. Okay. And so, you know, that's an option, rushing offense. And I loved, it was called the 16 beer. And it was just right off me. I had the opportunity to to get downfield and take on the middle linebacker. <laughs> and most of the time. Here's Holmes. Oh, he's going to run it. Seeking the boundary. Oh, how about Holmes? The freshman wow. lowering the pads and picking up 15. Delivering the. The pain there. Well Let's done. Go. Off the left side, down yeah, as, far as, as far as that, that play, I just remember Question I could read 10, the middle Taylor linebacker's Hill. eyes. I could see him looking into the backfield, and he had no idea what was coming. <laughs> so free hit, huh? Absolutely. You don't see that a lot anymore. The, the old no. veer. I still got shades of wishbone in the state of Utah or uh, those flex options, but those are going away quickly. As is time in this first half, 140 on a running clock. Holmes standing in, eyes downfield. Boy, not a lot of open space, and Holmes going to get brought down once again. Yeah, and you know, on on that play, you know that Ledger, he wants that play back. And I guarantee you he's going to say, man, I I wish I'd just throw that out of bounds. Tate credited with another sack. He's got like three tonight. He's been a beast. It's incredible, yeah. His season's so far... Is, is tremendous. That clock running as we're approaching one minute to go. You wonder if Timpanogos gets a stop here. They maybe call a timeout. I think they still have one left. We don't have timeouts on the board, so I'm guessing there. Second and long. Tucked here. Holmes up the middle. Boy, he's got blocking too. Ledger able to gain back the sack yards and more. And we'll get stoppage here, and there it is, the Tippin' Ogre's timeout with 43 seconds left. You know, and I thought we would see more of that, but but frankly, Tippin' Ogre's has played just tremendous, tremendous defense. They've been disciplined, and they have been spying Ledger and haven't haven't really let him get on. Un- unhooked here. Well, and I think one of the things you're a lineman, so tell me if I'm wrong. I, I'm I'm not a lineman, but I think a lot of times you see pass protection where it kind of fans out, so that as the quarterback works steps up in the pocket, there's lanes for him to escape. That hasn't been there tonight. It has not been there. And again, you know, credit Timpanogos for just they're it's they're just being, a clog. They're being yeah. true to their gap assignments, and and trust me, they've been watching film. They've seen Ledger do that. Uh, to other teams, and they said, hey, that's that's not going to happen to us. Even with that, you look at what Ledger has done. I mean, that was a tremendous play by yeah. a 14-year-old breaking, you know, breaking out of out of, out of of the pocket and uh, getting it back to third and at least manageable. Yeah, third and six here. Again, Tim Noakes did take that time out. So, again, Coach Heaps looking to be aggressive here. 43 seconds to go in the opening half. Here's Holmes. Looking, double coverage, fit that in. And I think they got him right at the sixth first down. Court Stewart. Stewart on the reception. Moving, moving the chains. <laughs> first down. Wow. Yeah. I just saw arm angle. A side arm angle right around the defender. That was a bullet. 
perfect pass. That's a gutsy throw. That's a gutsy throw. First down, Holmes. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what. I mean, you got a running back trying to pass protect. I had no shot on that one. Absolutely. When you know the other team's going to throw the ball, you pin your errors back, and nothing's going to stop you. you. You're hungry. I, I don't know if you watched the show. That was like Dusty Litzer hitting a sled. So earlier this year, we put Dusty on sleds, and, boy, he burst that puppy, and that's what we saw right there. Well done, Dusty. That's, that's, a, that's a good attack and a timeout taken here. Is again, Tim and Ogus. I want to get another lick at uh, the old offense on the field. We'll take a moment. I want to th- remind you of our sponsors. Of course, without them, this coverage would not be possible. And I uh, want to thank our good friends at Heidemann and Associates. They're a flat rate law firm, and they are completely focused on you and helping you in your legal needs and questions. Get a free consultation by calling them at 801 472 7742 or go to utah.law to find the law office nearest you. Second and 18 here. If you're seeing the Mills, Timmy goes, no, because doesn't have enough timeouts. You just run the ball here and go to the half. You know, being down 21, though, we may see. Possibly a trick play, possibly something to the perimeter. You never know. Fake 23 blast with the backside George reverse. That snap low. Holmes with it. Trying to evade. He'll throw this into the stands incomplete with 10 seconds left. Third down. Third down. Okay, we talked about favorite Halloween candy. What about your least favorite? I was never a nerds guy. Oh, you were? No. The uh, the sourness, I'm just, oh, okay. like, I'm, I'm good with, like, the sweet Sour Patch Kids, that sort of thing. Okay. But, like, the, the, the hard candy sour, it's like, nah, that's not really my thing. You can't do that, huh? No. You know, mine Yours? Was, I would say it wasn't necessarily a candy, but it was, like, the ripe puss, puff balls that maybe some somebody gave you. You were huh. walking around. It was in a plastic bag. <laughs> homemade. Oh, the homemade ones were always special. Can't do that anymore. Can't Holmes do that anymore. gets wrapped up here for a short game, and that'll do it. Well, head to the locker room. That'll Senior night at Tippin' Oaks has been all T Wolves. 21 0. Tippin' Oaks leading two. Salem Hills. You're watching KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week. Of course, Tippin' Oaks presented on the Rewind Sports Network by Brent Brown Toyota and brought to you by Heideman and Associates. Welcome back. Getting ready to start the second half. Dane Stewart, Eric Litster with you. 21-0, Timpanogos leading at the break. Eric, your thoughts on what we saw in that first half? Yeah, I mean, we'll just jump to the chase here. Salem Hills has got to get something going, get some rhythm. And, you know, you got to treat this as if it's 0-0 at this point. And, yeah. And, and we're going to see, are we going to see a team, and I don't think so, that that lies down, or are we going to see some fight? I I believe we're going to see some major fight for a touchback. from the Skyhawks. Well, let's talk about that because in the first half, we were talking about it at half. It just felt like Salem Hills wasn't able to get much going. The the pressure from Tim and Ogus has lived up to expectations. What do you do if you're Salem Hills here offensively in half number two? Yeah, I don't think you 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 do anything um, too different. We need we need to see Salem Hills execute. And that starts in the trenches with some basic blocking. You know, when, when you're going up against a, a, a three-man front, as in this case, you got to see some, some man-on-man blocking. That's a nice run there by Roper, Roper K to start off nine. this drive for Salem Hills. But they one. do make a quarterback change. It's Jedi Nelson, the junior, 6'2", wearing number seven, coming in under center here in the second half. Hey, that could be a difference maker. And, you know, maybe you lo- use Ledger... In the backfield, you use his speed, his athleticism. Yep. This could be a, this could be a good good change for for Salem Hills. They'll toss here on second down. K trying to turn up, slips a couple of Tippinogus defenders, split them beautifully as he'll pick up the first down. Exactly what you need here. Beautiful toss play. Roper K down to the third Lineman floor. downfield. Game yeah, off. totally first getting dirty. Stop. Great blocking. First down. It was one of the things we talked about with Coach Higginson before the game. I said, so is this kind of a slow it down, 
run the football, ball control. And he's like, yeah, that's what we want to try to do. And I think they were very balanced in that first half. But, boy, this second half, it comes out. It looks like power, power, power. Sticking with K, trying to get to that edge. Boy, that's a good chase. That pursuit was absolutely unbelievable. Shot out of a cannon. Yeah. Because he had the corner. He and had the good. edge. And on the stop. He was ready to go Second north half. and south. The defender blows it up. That was Tyler Hunter. We've called his name several times tonight, especially on the defensive side for Timpanoga. Still a gain of two there for Kay. The key in the first half was Salem Hills was again getting behind the chains. Here we're seeing a commitment to north and south, run the ball, smash mouth. On second down, first time for Nelson to throw, looking sideline, just overthrew his man, was looking the way of Court Stewart. Yeah, that was a good ball. That was a good, that was a good ball and also a good play to throw deep because you did have more pressure coming up the middle. You had less men in the backfield defending that pass play. Liam Fuller was stride for stride there, one of the seniors on this Tempenorgus roster. Did a good job to make that difficult on the edge. Third and eight here for Salem Hills. K here to the left of Nelson. Nelson, that ball's out, caught across midfield as he's able to find Christian Miller. He's been one of the better targets tonight for the Skyhawk yeah, offense. Yeah, you know, he has, talk about length and size. He is a big target. And he just runs that little short curl route, sits down in the zone. He's open. And then a beautiful, beautiful ball, committed, didn't think about it, Jedi threw a dart. So first down here across midfield are the Skyhawks. He'll go back to the ground, K. And he'll, he's able to pick up about three before being wrestled down there by that defensive line. Yeah, and you know, I love this guy. Roper, again, he was, his, his hole was absolutely plugged. He dances out of it and, again, immediately goes north and south. A lot of runners, they want to dance around. He just, he commits to it, goes north and south follows his blockers, and gets what he can. And that's that's three yards on first down. It's almost like he has the perfect balance of shiftiness without east and west, right? He does. Second down, Nelson looking. Has a man that caught. Here's Ethan Houghton taking it up inside the 35 to the 34. Salem Hill starting to cook. They are starting to cook, and, but there's still balance. You know, we see the run. This is the first time that I've seen Tippinogus a little bit on their heels. Yes. Here. And it feels like the first rhythm for Salem Hills offensively. Yeah, and, and one thing you have to point out is the pass protection. Yes. Jedi has time to sit back there. And unfortunately, we didn't see that with Ledger in the first half. Yep. We'll talk about that. In fact, I, I want to tee that up. We had an, a great conversation at half. Is Roper, no, that is not Kay. Uh, that is someone else there with the carry. Hard to see the number there amongst the pack of T-Wolves. Yeah, that's, that's some all-star wrestling right there at the end of the play. <laughs> that actually looked like that might have been Holmes there on the run. But let's talk about offensive line. We were talking about that. You played O-line. What is key game. when you're trying Second to establish down. good pass or good running, good run blocking up front? Well, it comes down to a couple of things. The first is footwork. You have to have quick feet. You don't think of linemen... Um, you know, with quick feet. Some people call them dancing bears. You want to be a dancing bear, which means you do have to have some good footwork. And, of course, you do have power. We'll talk about the rest here in just a sec. Second down. Nelson looking. Trying deep for the end zone. Tripped up. Incomplete. They say inadvertent contact there. No That's penalty. Incomplete. Yeah. In, in, in addition to... You know, quick Stewart feet. And receiver. You have to make Incomplete contact and secure contact. And you eight. cannot let the defender dictate your hand placement. You have to get inside, lock lock up the defender, and keep those feet moving. So when you say quick feet, I hear that a lot. Is that just getting your body in the right position? Is that what we mean by quick feet? Absolutely. Getting there first. Absolutely. There's there's getting there first, but also that lateral movement. Because defenders are, you know, they're not just going to run straight at you. 
Third down, thrown out for K. Boy, and just not much there. We see that pursuit of this Timonogos defense limiting the game. You know, but again, though, brought down that was at least positive. Yeah. That, you know, they, they, they throw that little swing pass, get it outside. We'll see if they go for it here on fourth down. They're going to bring out the uh, field goal unit here, looking for points. So this is going to be a long field goal. This is going to be about 48 yards here for Salem Hills. Talking about season long was 42. Eric had that note. And we got movement up front. This looks to be offside. Does that change the decision here? It's tempting. It's absolutely (laughs) tempting. You may. I see Jedi. Yeah. We saw Tibinogas take advantage of some offsides in the first quarter. They, uh, Salem Mills might look to the same. At this point, you go for it. Yeah. I think so, too. So the movement there by Tim and Ogus, the offside, will set fourth and two here for Salem Hills you know, and the and offense on the field. And I don't think you, you, you get cute here. Go, t let the defense power, hear you. Power, Roper right up the middle. Well, it Let's looks to be that three. formation. It's going to be mano y mano. K looking right side, doesn't have it. The Timpanogos defense coming up with a fourth down stop. Matai Toa. Brighton Tate. What a tremendous defensive stop no there down. to blow that play up. Matai Toa and Brighton Tate first credited with the Seawood. stop. And the Timpanogos defense keeps the donut on the board. That still's got to build some confidence in, yes. in Salem Hills, yep. though. Moving that ball down the field. At least getting in striking position. Yeah, we talked about for uh, Salem Hills. Yeah. Well, both teams, how big this game was. It's their region conclusion. They take on Bear River next week, but yeah, it gives them a little good feeling back as they'll give to Livingston here. Tibinogus will. Cuts in the middle. Luke able to pick up seven, maybe eight there on the screen. Yeah, beautiful screen play to the Living perimeter the there. The Although, I will say this, game, I can hear some pads popping and two. all the way up here. Salem Hills isn't just lying down. No, nope. Oh, and that pass too tall was looking the way of Graf. Coverage was off there too. Coverage was off. He definitely had the opportunity. It's a little, a little out of reach. Another third down here for Tippinogus. And look, they handled these situations beautifully for the first 18 minutes. Closed that first half. Had some stalled drives. We'll see if they can get back on track here. Bretzing with the carry. First down and more. There's the beast doing what he did yeah, in that first went half. Went in down. <laughs> Hand it off to Bretzing. Six-yard game. Good for another. t you know, he's so selfless, but, man, you just know he's like, man, my number's called. Right. There's trust in me. I got to get this for my teammates. I was going to say 5'11", 210. He's prototypical back, good speed with it. It's on first down. Bretson gets another carry. Trying to move behind that offensive line. He'll pick up two. Yeah, that's some patient Bretson running. Forward to the you know, a lot of running backs will – actually outpace their blockers, run in front of them or try to run around them. Bretzing's just patient there, working behind him, picks up two or three there. Empty backfield here on second down. Boy, everyone in this defense within five yards of that line of scrimmage. Looking for Livingston. Of course. Of course. Why not? <laughs> Why not? With an Another contested catch. catch. into Skyhawk territory. And Fourth down at the 45. Good for and great, great coverage on the Gee, play. What? Now they're running tempo. Yep. Trips to the top here. Livingston one-on-one at the bottom. They'll throw out. Screen set up here for Graf. And a penalty flag in here. This might be a holding. Again, spreading the ball out, trying to spread that defense out to 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 soften up the middle for those runs straight up the middle, north and south. And we continue to see Tippinogas not just with the quick pace, but with the quick throws. Right? I mean, yeah. I mean, Riggs is not holding on to that ball. No, no, definitely not allowing. Holding us the T balls, move the ball back to the forty-five. The Skyhawks to get even close to him. So uh, it is a holding there. It was called on one of the receivers. 
Uh, it'd be first and 20 here for Timpanogos. Boy, and that pressure was coming. Able to complete it still the graph. And uh, in fairness, I mean, pressure's there from the Salem Hills, just more. not there quick enough. You know, you have to wonder if Riggs is saying, second down oh, first and, and 20? Well, I just can, you know, throw for a few more yards. Uh, yeah, there. yeah. Second down. They'll run. Bretzing. Oh, he's got a lane. Bretzing cutting back to the left. Here's Bretzing inside the 20, the 15, and tackled at the 14. First Bretzing and 10 for Timonogos. What, what, what a strong, nimble run there. The 29 by yard gain. And another. We got a Salem Hills Gene player down Ruff. here. That looked like that could have been tied up near the line of scrimmage. He put the safety on skates. What a run from Bretzing. Well, not only that, but he used the referee a little bit there uh, to his advantage. Part of the field, right man. Part, part of the, of the field. field. Absolutely. We got an injury Way timeout. Go, yeah, that's a heck of a run. We're going to step aside, take a quick break here for the injury. We'll be back. You're watching Timpanogos Football presented by Brent Brown Toyota on the Rewind Sports Network. Welcome back. 5.09 to go. Timpanogos looking like they did in that first quarter. Good looking drive here. Pistol boy Bretzing. It's like eight yards behind the ball here. A deep pistol. Play action. Looking. Livingston. Caught. Touchdown. Touchdown. What a catch for Luke Livingston at the pile on. Touchdown, Timpanogos. Beautiful pitch and catch there. Tremendous hands. And and frankly, really, really good coverage. Wasn't a lot that the defender could do. It's right in his hip pocket. And Livingston still comes down with a beautiful, beautiful catch. His second touchdown catch of the night. His third total touchdown as this PAT up. And that one through and good. 28 nothing. Timonogos with the lead over Salem Hills. On your feet, T Wolves. It's fight song time. You know, you see his name in the box score, and you think, oh, he's probably pretty good. Then you see him in person, you're like, that kid can play. Well, and what's amazing is they spread they spread the ball out so much that he isn't like a 60 catches right you know and then everybody else has three or four well and that's one of the things too with with him is there have been a couple times where it's like oh we're you know four receivers and we're isolating luke and they don't have to give him the ball every time it's like look you got one-on-one -on -one. he's gonna win that matchup but they do spread it around and it's yeah. what makes this offense so tough yeah it absolutely does and and again you have a running back that can catch the ball as well. You have so many weapons. It is so hard to defend this offense. Well, Tim and Ogus to kick off. We have not seen Bretzing hit the uprights. Come on, Easton. In fact, that last kickoff was way off. I mean, it was like 10 yards wide. So, <laughs> you know, he's had quite a few reps tonight. <laughs> he so has had break. a lot of reps. This one will be wide to the right. A little short, too, but Take still off. eight, nine yards deep in the end zone. First and ten, Salem Hill. Yeah, again, going back to, down to, the Titans and to Tip and Ogus with respect to spreading the ball the around. This is just a one-man show. It is really quite chocolate. amazing that your, your, your senior wide receiver, who's really all stayed in, in so many categories, it's not like he has 80 catches or, right. or what have you. And he has, he, right. he has the talent to do it. He has the talent to do it without question. On first down, K going to try to burst this outside. Nice run for Roper. It feels like yeah. he can reel off eight yards pretty yeah. easily. Beautiful run. Roper with an eight-yard gain on the play. Strong offensive line Second play there. Two. Four and a half to go here in our third quarter. You know, we haven't seen Ledger. I hope he's okay. I I saw him on the field. 
I think he ran the ball. I couldn't tell. I did see zero on the field, one play on that previous drive. Is okay. Kay again here making men miss? Again, north and south, great blocking, taking it to him. In fact, Ledger coming on here for this play. Here we go. And and I actually like this. Look, we saw Livingston throw a ball. We've seen Ledger can throw. You actually can have some trickeration or different looks with two quarterbacks on the field here. They'll toss. Okay. Able to take this up to the 40. We'll pick up a pair. Yeah, and that was really making something out of out of not much. Able to just will his way to a to a two two yard, two yard game, game there. Second down. That pursuit by 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 Tip and Ogus is just it's amazing. Yeah. They're able to get to the perimeter, get to the edge there and protect that, that that corner. Well, with all the offensive splash that we've seen from Tippin Nogas in a box score, even on the field tonight, the defense doesn't get a lot of love. I think what we've seen is they're, they're probably pretty underrated. This ball looking up the seam, that was intended there for Huffton and just threw his fingertips. Nice effort. Nice effort, and he did have protection there. He probably could have given it just another half second before launching that. Incomplete that pass. pass. Up third. Seven and third and eight here. Shotgun here for Jedi. Miller across the formation in motion. Now looking that way, and boy, that could have been intercepted. As Trent Lewis nearly had his mitts on it. Yeah, Tippinogas brought the heat on that play. Jedi. Trent just, Lewis with the coverage. Just slightly Fourth off down. target there. So Salem Hills here will put this ball back to the T-Wolves. T-Wolves definitely on track for their 38.8 points per game average. Need just 11 points and, and they're there. Well, and... We got a little fun fact. We'll uh, we'll tee that one up after the pun if we've got a moment. As this kick away and caught on the run, looking up the middle and uh, stalled after about a ten yard return. So uh, Tim and Ogus, this offense looked good tonight. They've been held under thirty points once on the year. And that was the promo. So you talk about a 38 point per game average. It's not uncustomary. 60, 50, 40. It's pretty potent offense. It's been that way all year. Yeah, it has. Yeah, they've they've been able to pretty much score at will. Provo definitely held them in check, but they've they've made some adjustments. Maybe they weren't quite as healthy for that game. They're healthy tonight. Doing a great job. You know, and it's not, you don't have to go that far back to think about this program. It was not a program that won a lot of football games. You think about where they are tonight, you can see a confidence. You see camaraderie. You see an approach and a game plan. Like, what a job building this program into winning football, which has not been the case here, was not the case here five, ten years ago. Yeah, and, and absolutely credit Coach Heaps. You can Second tell that he, he really gets his players to buy in. They are buying into the system. Again, more tempo. And I love this. I think I think tempo can be such a differentiator. There's nice carry there, picking up about and five. Going forward for a gain of five. Correction six. Bring that offensive third line. And one. Loving this. They're saying, can we please keep running the ball? This is a Tim View or a Tim Benogas team that of course, a couple of years ago, won nine games. That was a program high, seven last year. This would be their seventh win if this final holds tonight. It would be the first time that they've won seven or more games in three consecutive seasons. Third and one. And we got a timeout here being taken by Tim you know, Let's talk about that real quick, though, as well. It's, there really is a selfless mentality i know i've talked about it before with spreading the ball around you have five receivers with 20 plus 
catches multiple running backs with touchdowns and you you have this selfless selfless feeling about this team and it's really again comes down to we don't care as long as we just win you know one of the that's one of the things i think is really undersold i mean you see professional athletes and sometimes they're painted in a certain light and sometimes that's justified sometimes it's not but you can go look at high school programs in this state and we've covered best of the best programs for years and when you go talk to those players there's not a lot of me and my on the field of winning football right it that's is right. about us and that that culture becomes so important to taking a program to that next step getting players to buy into that can be a challenge but boy once they do that sky can be the limit and yeah. here's a nice run yeah. peterson first down and more Bowling ball. you know and although Once he again, didn't he didn't the carry the ball on line. that play but easton talked game. about and hey, another. He gave all he the credit to his team. He was all about team. He didn't talk about himself, didn't talk about his own glory. They'll go right back to Peterson here with the first down carry. Boy, how about that? Talk no give up. Talk about a bowling ball. Nine. And Second when you down. when that could be your running back off the bench? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, when you that's when you really break the the will yeah. of the opposing team yep. Yep. is when you just you're running it and you're running it and you're getting first down after first down and that's the difference between good football teams and great football teams right is that depth it is uh, they go peterson again right up the gut and it's just yeah, nothing, wearing down this d nothing again, fancy nothing the middle, fancy down to the right up the middle it's an eight yard game ring up strong, second down strong and two. offensive line play second and two here eh, long two as we're inside of the final minute here in this third quarter. They'll give it back to Peterson. Oh, and his lineman tripped him up there. You talk about the patience, and that's what happens when you get just a little in front of yourself. That's right. You can tell he was just a little too fast to the yeah. ball there. And that'll do it. Third quarter in the books. Timpanogos. On senior night, boy, they're looking strong. 28 nothing with the lead over Salem Hills. And you're watching Timonogos Football presented by Brent Brown Toyota on the Rewind Sports Network. Thank Welcome back. Support. I want to thank our sponsors that make this possible. Third down here for Timonogos to start this fourth quarter. High snap. Riggs going to keep it. And, boy, that high snap maybe threw that off just yeah, enough. Yeah, it definitely did. Uh, the hole closed so quickly, and by the time he secured the ball, which is the most important thing, you don't want to turn the ball over. He did that. Just wasn't able to get anything on that play. But maybe they will here. Yeah. It's well, like uh, they might be going for it. It's fourth and five. We've seen Salem jump at times, but I think this is a go-for-it situation, right? I'm snapping it here. Oh, and they get him to jump. Is that the third time tonight? Fourth? It is. Laundry of many colors all over the field. That's got to be one hard count. I didn't see a fake Off clap or anything, Skyhawks. but multiple Skyhawks jumped. Yeah. Five yard penalty. And so that, well, I thought it was, you know, again, I hate to be trite here, but everything Good goes back another. to the basics. Yes. Key well, who's going to control the line of scrimmage? turnovers penalties what are the things that you can control here's the and thing those are things you can control. yeah here's the thing we talked with both staffs i asked them a question what's the key for you tonight did you hear any groundbreaking answer no no it's look we can't turn the ball over you know like we got to run the football it, it's really simple it, it, you can complicate team. it but it's really it's simple it always comes down, down to those basics without without question and we've seen, even from the get-go, yeah. right, just kick themselves in the shin maybe once or twice too many tonight. Second down. Here's Peterson. Oh, just over-pursuited there. Salem Hills nearly had a chance right at the line of scrimmage. He was down. That ball play ruled dead. You know, going back to the penalties, some of those penalties really, again, have been critical. Yes. How many first downs? Yeah, they're all fourth down they're, penalties. They're, they're off the field. Yes. I mean, they're off the field. Good job. Yep. Applause. Yep. Great job, Salem Hills. And then, oh, now you're stuck out there. And and you give those up, 
and then you let points go on the board. Is this kept by Riggs? And it's like deflating. It is. Right? It's like we could have been off. Line. Yeah, you, and don't, you don't know how demoralizing that is. Four. Especially, I hate Good to say it, another. You're, you're a little Gee, tired. Whoa. Yeah. You know? Well, look, here's the thing. We talk about Tim and um, you know, the tempo they play with tonight. This has been a draining drive of that Salem Hills D because it's been much more measured, right? Been yeah. four yards here, three yards there, penalty here, like just gotten away. Bootleg. Riggs. Now he's going to try to run it himself. Did he make it? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Timonogus. Riggs takes it in from nine yards out. Yeah, again, talking about that drive. It absolutely is one of those soul sucking drives. Just methodically, slowly down the field and converting on a fourth down due to a penalty gives. The T Wolves another chance of, yeah. of, of, of life. You know, it's put up 34 points. We'll see if they can take this extra point here. This point after up, good. 35 nothing. Here's All Tim and Ogus. 10 minutes, three seconds left in the game. Team here on senior night. Skyhawk zero. T Wolves, everyone on your feet for the side song. We'll take a quick moment here. Thank our sponsors. Want to remind you, boy, that chilly weather, it's starting to settle even here tonight at Timpanogos. And Igloo Outfitters has you covered. It's the coziest wearable sleeping bag that you'll ever try. And it's got you covered during those chilly days and nights. Worry no more about the weather. Watch your favorite team in comfort with Igloo Outfitters. That's I-G-L-U. Go to IgloOutfitters.com and enter Rewind for $20 off. Never miss the moments with Igloo Outfitters. Yeah, so I'm so glad Dusty has one of those. You know, Me too. I mean, keep keep that keep that guy warm. <laughs> you know, it's got to be hard sitting in that studio, 72 degrees. It can get a little brisk when that it AC fan chilly. turns on, you yeah. know? I mean, not to mention drinking a, a cool soda. It's That's just, right. you know. That's right. It's a tough life. Tough life. So once again, over that 30-point mark are the T-Wolves. As this kick off into the end zone. Kick off into the end zone for a touchback. First and 10 Skyhawks. There's of course, uh, uh, you know, pretty crazy when you think about, we talk about building this Timonogos program. They're ranked eighth in the RPI coming into games tonight. Obviously, Salem Hill 6-2. and two. That RPI going to be benefited. This could be a top six team in 4A come playoff time. That's crazy when you think about where this program was three, four, five years yeah, ago. It's absolutely crazy, and and they're you know you gotta you gotta. I mean, they're a team you have to reckon with, right? Yep. You definitely have to think, hey man, I sure don't want to play them. Maybe the first first round of the playoffs. And it, and here's the other thing we we talked we mentioned this. Both coaches and I talked about the physicality. Uh, this Tim and Ogus team has played physical tonight. So if you think that's the quote unquote undoing of Tim and Ogus, it's not. They can play physical. Yeah, and this, so this is not a finesse team. No. No. They, I mean, they've controlled the line of scrimmage on both, both sides, sides yep. of the ball. Yep. So this uh and this Salem Hills team is not uh, you know, something to sneeze at either. Th- this has not been their best game, right? And, and you know, they'll say, "Look, give credit to Timbenogus. They were tough tonight and they were." But but we know there's a much higher ceiling to the Salem Hills yeah, yeah. team. Yeah, absolutely. Every team has two. has some rough rough games. Down. And how how are you going to respond? Look, Timpanogos lost forty eight to thirteen to Provo. Sometimes it happens, right? It does. Second down. Here's Nelson trying to step up. Jedi. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe gain a pair. Nobody open downfield. Not a lot of vision there. Pocket starts to collapse. Yeah. Step up. Another third and long here. Third and six for the Skyhawks. Over the middle, through the fingertips, was intended for Stewart. And he'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, just just off his fingertips there. Passing complete. He knows he has a first down. He wants that one back so badly. Fourth down. 
Well, that's where, you know, it feels like tonight's a bit of a snowball game, right? We talk about some of the third and longs that Tim and Ogres has converted, some of the penalties that kept them on the field, and then they score, and it's just like at, at some point you just lose – you lose your rhythm. Well, and also lose your sometimes confidence. you're just trying so hard. And and I hate to say it, sometimes when you try so hard, you make some of those mistakes. It's like in golf, right? Is this here Stewart making up for that catch across the 51st down? Look, I'm I'm not bad at golf when I relax. But when I feel the pressure of oh shoot, <laughs> you know, I, I had a 15 yard drive off the tee. I got to make yeah. it up. The hole goes sideways really fast. Yeah, tr- tremendous analogy, and and that's what we see. In, in, in really any sport as well. That's hey, a, now we see some tempo from, yep. from the Skyhawks here. Yep. First down across midfield. Oh, in court. I don't know if that one got jarred loose or not. It was close, but he thought he should have had it. Looked like there might have been a, a strip there, yep. but he knows, he knows he can have that. Yep. And here's the thing. We talk about Tough night for Salem. Not their best game. You get points here. You get something to close out the game. That can go a long way, too, to help keeping you focused. Is this ball over the middle? That caught. Boy, and inside the 20 for the first time tonight after the reception made by Huffton. I have to talk about that play. That was absolutely a tremendous throw by Jedi. He had to throw that over yep. the top of the middle linebacker who is sprinting deep. In that cover two. First down. Oh, nearly intercepted. But, but no, you're right. Like, you have to take something off that. He, but, yeah, you got to have enough to get it over. Yeah, That's a tough that throw. Is such a tough throw. He dropped Second that down. in perfectly. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. So Second down now. I will shout out Ledger as well, who's been back there. And he's yep. been doing a nice job in pass blocking as well. Looking to the end zone, back corner, overthrown. Coverage in place there for Tim Anogas. Yeah, beautiful coverage. Third down. There as, the, as, as Tim Anogas drops, drops back, knowing, hey, look, they got to throw the ball here. Not very often you get Jedi and Luke on opposing forces, but we've That's had that right. tonight. You, you right. like that? I do like that. Yeah. Well done. I'm not a Star Wars yeah, guy. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's about the best I got in me. Jedi going to tuck this himself. Lower in the pad, still on his feet. And Jedi Nelson takes this for a gain of 10 on the ground, maybe 11 first down Nelson and goal Nelson for Salem Hills. Hills. You know, I'll just say one word there, first and that's goal. grit. Talk about grit to grind it out, make that play possible. And get the first down. You you asked the question, would Salem Hills cave in? No, they are fighting and scrapping. Jedi following his line into the end zone. Touchdown, Skyhawks. Yeah, they definitely willed, willed themselves to seven points, to six points, soon to be seven points. Beautiful, beautiful plays, play calling on that drive. I think the tempo definitely helped. They might even be second-guessing themselves. I know that Coach talked about slowing it down a little. Maybe they needed to speed it up a little bit and run a little bit more tempo, keep keep the Timberwolves on their heels. Well, and here's the interesting thing, right? Sports are about matchups. And I know some might be like, look, we moved the ball better with Jedi than we did. This is not about who was at quarterback or their performance. It's about the matchups it created. Because you can see Jedi just presents something different tonight. Yeah. Right? And, and it has looked more float. And to your point, you know, Ledger's been involved in the offense, and, and he's done a good job out of the backfield. He's ran it. He's pass protected. It's just been a better fit in this second half, and it's paying or paid dividends here on that drive. Good with five, yeah, absolutely. Games. Ledger's played, played well. Even in the first half, he was under so much duress. Yeah. It was hard for him even to get anything going. Jedi does come in. And, and, and let's face it, let's get more playmakers on the field. And yeah. let's, let's put Ledger in another position where the defense has somebody else to worry about. Because when he's at quarterback, yeah, you, there is a threat that he might run the ball. But when he's in at running back, you have to account for him. That's a great point. I want to remind you, Advanced Windows are currently running their fall window sale. Right now you can get $2,000 off 10 windows or more. Plus, 60, per, 60 months of 0% interest financing is available. This is for a limited time only. If you need windows, check out advancedwindowsusa.com. 
or give them a call at 801-850-9100. Proudly made here in the state of Utah. Advanced Windows, thanks for their sponsorship. Also want to remind you, Heidemann Associates is a flat rate law firm that's completely focused on you and your legal needs. Give them a call for a free consultation. Just call 801-472-7742. Great, great response by, by Salem Hills. They gotta feel they gotta feel some momentum there. Yep. And and that drive, as they try the onside here, it's gotta go ten. And I think we're gonna get an illegal touching. I think they're gonna say that was about nine and three eighths. That was so onside close. Flag on the play. That turf just swallowed it up yep. there. But but, you, but oh, honestly. That was a great onside kick. It was. It really was. He just needed that wind to blow south just a little bit. Um, but, look, that's the drive that I think I was expecting Salem Hills to have tonight, yeah. right? And if they could have established that early, yeah. you got yourself a different ball game here in the fourth. Yeah. You know, interesting, though, on that drive, they did rely a lot on the passing game. They they, they got some... some... No they waved it off. So the question is who recovered it. I thought Salem Hills did, but I might have missed that because Tim and Oga's offense is remaining on the field here. Yeah, so Tim and Oga's football. And Chase Riggs night is done on senior night. As, uh, here's Peterson. Boy, that jersey getting stretched out a little bit there on the play. He'll pick up a yard. James Robinson with the carry. One yard gain on the play. They're still running tempo down. here. Even with some of some of these other players that are that are substituting in and filling in, that's such a good feeling as well for some of these uh, non-starters to get some experience. It's going to help you down the road in the future, develop confidence in a lot of these a lot of these players. On second down, no run. It's number 46 is the quarterback. I don't have a 46 on my roster. The two deep they sent us had Nate Stalker as the backup quarterback. I, I don't know who it is. So we'll just say 46. Our apologies. We can't get you a name. We're so sorry, parents. Yeah. We do try. We do try. You know, giving these, these athletes... An opportunity is also good because we've seen with some of those injuries. Yes. We want them to have a little bit of playing time. They have some experience of their own in these these situations. That can make a big difference. Is a run with Peterson here on third down, trying to move that pile. He'll be just shy. Be fourth and three here. Beautiful run. Again, that offensive line. Robinson keeps down to the 42 yard line. Four yard gain. Just doing work. Fourth down. And three. Fourth and short. I think offense probably goes for it here. And In fact, we said Chase Riggs' night was done. We might have lied to you. He's trying to put a helmet on here. That play clock, still time, 12 seconds left. And indeed, Riggs coming out here. Got to hurry. Play clock down to six. We might have to take a time out here. Down to two, one, and they will. That substitution just took too long. Timeout. And so it'll be fourth down and timeout here for Timonogos. You know, I, I want to shout out some of the unsung people yeah. that really make this thing possible. You saw there. Fans at the conclusion Rick's of the game. Put, like trying to put on his helmet. You know, you have trainers. Parents. You have facilities, people. You have equipment managers. You have so parents, of course. On the field you have other coaches right that may not Thank get the you. glory and, and also may not get some of the heat, you know, when, when you lose the game. But you got to shout out all these other people that really make this thing possible. For, for each team. Yeah. Well, we were up here. You know, we're on top of the press box tonight. We were up here. We were talking with Tim Adogas, director of football operations. That's right. And he's like, yeah, I'm setting this up here. And we've seen him down on the field. He's all over, right, helping everything run for the Tim Adogas football program. There are so many people in the press box, on the field, in the building that contribute to all of our athletic uh, ventures and certainly without them not possible. Fourth down, all-out pressure, 
This one looking deep, tied up. No flag going to come on that one. And so we'll get a turnover on downs. Penalty flag here on the far side, but that will be for an ineligible receiver downfield, and that will turn it over on downs. Flag on the play. And it was receiver it's down field. Riggs, Riggs with a nice decline. pass on that play. <laughs> First and ten. Obviously, just, just a little bit off, but it's going to hurt his completion percentage. <laughs> But that's about the worst damage right, on the play. That's right. So, if that's the worst thing that happens to him, <laughs> that, uh, yeah. So, first down here for Salem Hills. Two forty-five. Of course, we're under the running clock rule here, so that thing is moving. You know, I, I gotta ask a question. I know this is so strange. Who would win in a fight, a Skyhawk or a Timberwolf? Yeah, I mean, look, the Skyhawk has the ultimate evasion, right? Because they can just fly sure. away. But if that claw gets planted, I, I like the Timberwolf because yeah. you're going to get that thing on the ground, and then those teeth, they can be that's, fierce. That's true, but, you know, the Skyhawks can, you know, peck out eyeballs. I, yeah, and, and look, I you attack the back, man. Good. There's not much the T-Wolf can Pretty do, right? Claws, too, and yeah. it's a big enough Skyhawk that they could, like, pick it up and carry it. Uh, tonight it's been the T-Wolf the has had the better the end of it. But that's a great. That's a great question. This one tucked. Jedi looking up that sideline as he's heading for the sticks there. It sounds like somebody that's trying to make a bet. And they're saying, okay, <laughs> I, I know nothing about these Right, teams. right. So which, I think this mascot, which mascot would, would, yeah. would win. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, for sure. I had a dear friend, and she won the Monday Night Football Pick'em League. And you know how she won? Off of that? No. Colors? It's even better. Okay. Which city would be most fun to shop in. To shop in? To shop in. Well, we know Jacksonville didn't finish very strong that year, right? She won over $300 oh, man. in the pot. Wow. That's crazy. A, yeah. Of course, we got a proud bee with us tonight, right? Yeah, Those bees, look, they're annoying. Hey, you're until, allergic to them. Well, until November, you man. Allergies. In November, they get a little slow, right? The bee... <laughs> Looks for hibernation quickly. But hey, with the, you, you got honey, though. You that that is true. It produces something. Delicious. Jedi looking deep. And this one. Oh, what a catch. Secured by Grayson Wilson as it's uh, Salem Hills inside the five for first and goal. Absolutely beautiful touch pass from Jedi there. Skyhawks quickly on it. That clock moving. Jedi trying to run it again. Penalty flags here on the play. Flag this will not ball. count with 113 on the clock. Is this offside? Yes. Offside the oh, defense. Okay. After this is to the goal. Free play first. Still move. first down. Yeah, move that ball a little bit closer. Jedi saying, hey, I should have been in. That shouldn't have stopped the play. And I think uh, that used to be the case. That's not the case anymore because you think about all the fourth downs have been automatic first. They haven't ran the ball. Yeah, and it's a dead that, ball. After that beautiful pass, you had Timpanogos on their heels. Yeah, they were so, trying to get lined up, yep. trying to get set. So it's perfect. Here, here it is, first and goal. Jedi touchdown. Second of the night, Jedi Nelson taking it in. With a minute left, they put another seven points on the scoreboard. Beautiful, beautiful drive marching down the field. That pass play, definitely the difference maker. The receiver just ripping the ball yeah. out of the defender's hand. He wanted it. We talk about Luke Livingston. He's been great, but Grayson Wilson, I mean, that, that's up there with Luke catches it, tonight. It is. That kick up, good. 35-14. Not the F, not the result Salem Hills wanted, but the effort this fourth quarter has been impressive. And you can build off this. You absolutely can build off of this for next week. Your season isn't over. You still have more play, more quarters, more more games to play. This is going to be a learning experience, yeah. without, without a doubt. It'll be interesting to see where they go. Obviously, next week they take on Bear River, and then playoffs around the corner, and... You know, I, I, I like what you said. It, it's not that uh, Ledger wasn't good at quarterback, but the offense forces different matchups. And we'll see if they stay with this because it has looked productive with yeah, Jedi. Yeah, and Jedi, 
as a defensive back, has seven interceptions. That's, yeah, that blows that's crazy. my mind. And, you know, in talking to their coaches, they have taken that off of his plate. Right, right. So, do Which you, you understand. If, if you're the starting quarterback, you know, you want him going Absolutely. both ways as a freshman? Absolutely. But now do you rethink that? Yeah. And, again, his talent is just so needed yeah. where you have him play both ways. If, if you're running him out of the backfield and you've got two or three backs – that allows you to put him on defense as well, right? Yes. As this kick, uh, Tim and Ogus, boy, they were looking for that onside. It took a deflection, and my goodness, Luke Livingston able to get back on it. That was, a, that was a scrum. Special teams are so first and ten uh, teams at the forty-two. People just don't they don't think about them. They yeah. turn off the TV. They go to the bathroom or, or take a take a snack break during <laughs> during special teams plays. But man. There, uh, there's some hitting that goes on during those special team plays. You could argue Kyle Whittingham established a career based on special teams. It, it can be a critical part. As uh, We're in victory formation. Tim and Ogus here to nail it out. As uh, We've got a timeout taken here by Salem Hills. Home side not liking that. Hey, they're not quitters. Yeah. They're, they're going <laughs> to... They're going to try and put some more points on the board if, if they can. Eric, I'd be curious, your thoughts, what we saw tonight, uh, maybe a thought for each side. Well, for, for Timpanogos, not a tremendous surprise. They pretty much scored at will. They proved that the 311 points to lead Region 8 was definitely no fluke. The run game is, is, is tremendous. The pass game is tremendous. Their defense didn't disappoint. Again, they've added to those tackles for loss. They've added to the sacks. So nothing really surprising there. Um, I do love the fact that they did win the trenches, and they 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 didn't have as many mistakes or mental errors there. Um, with respect to to the Skyhawks, look gutsy gutsy performance. They didn't give up. They didn't just pack it in when they could have when they were down. Obviously, the coaching staff tried something different in the second half, and we may see that they continue with that moving forward. You know, I, I thought the uh, the effort tonight, especially in the second half from Salem Hills, was something you can take away from this game. Obviously, you know, it's going to be the third loss of the year, but you talk about the mental resiliency, the stick to and yet the execution, too. Um, really impressive. Yeah, and, and the big thing is you have to see this as a growing experience. Yes, yep. You you cannot let this or let this team beat you twice. You might have a 24-hour rule where yep. you say, okay, let's lick our wounds for the next 24 hours, but come next week, it is a new It's week. over. It's right. over. Let's squash it. Let's move forward. We know we're a better team than this. Tim Benogas. And they're just trying to take time off the clock here because it'll be fourth down, and uh, that's going to be the last time out. So we'll have a punt here, a little extracurricular. Yeah, that's the first time that we've seen yeah, know, one of those problems. Yep. On. And, and it's, it's impressive, and it speaks well to both teams. We didn't see anything that was unnecessary tonight. And, and this is where, you know, I, I, don't, I can't speak for players on the field. We're above the Timonoga section. There are some that are not loving these timeouts. But, look, you have a chance to get the ball back here, right, because of those timeouts. And I understand the frustration. Like, you can't win, but they're, they're not focused on winning this game, right? You know, it's interesting. I go back to a basketball playoff game between the Chicago Bulls and the Utah Jazz. Oh, that and nearly blocked. Just, just quickly, the Utah Jazz were absolutely destroying the Chicago Bulls. And guess what the Bulls did? They kept calling timeouts at the end of the game. Yeah. Just like this. Well, here's the thing. Here's the other side of it, okay? What if this is 35-31? Well, this gives you an opportunity to practice that scenario, right? right? So, hey, look, we're going to get the ball back with 40 seconds, and we got to go score, right? right? This is a scenario situation play. That's right. It might not change the outcome, but this gives you an opportunity to coach in a real game setting. You can't mimic this in you practice. Cannot. You cannot. Great point. So first down here for Salem Hills. Starting at the 36, Jedi. 
trying to extend this. He's going to try to run it. Looking up that boundary. Gets a nice block from guess who? Ledger Holmes freeing him up. <laughs> up the sideline across the 50. He's just a flat-out football player. Unbelievable. Territory. First At 14 years Hill. old. Lots of wisdom there. Also a we-not-me guy. He doesn't play like a freshman. No, not at all. First down, 30 seconds to go. Jedi, eyes down the field, looking sideline. Was that intercepted? Yes, it was. Picked off, and that That's will do it. The statement made by Tyler Hunter, who's Tyler made defensive Hunter. play after What's defensive the play, the but the sealer there from the senior cornerback. You know, they had eight interceptions so far this season. They get another one to close this thing out. Now it truly is victory yep. formation. Last play of the game coming up for Timpanogos, and it will be the senior, Chase Riggs, to put the final stamp here on senior night. I will say this as well. Jedi's got an arm. Yes, he does. <laughs> he can he can sling it. And even that ball, it's caught because it's double coverage. That's it's right. intercepted because it's double coverage, That's right? right? Anyway, Riggs to take the final knee. And that will do it. Timpan and Ogus, a big burst at home. They go up 35 nothing, and you will walk out with a 35-14 win over Salem Hills to improve to 4-1 in Region Scott 72 14. on the year. Eric, your selection of a player of the game. You know, I'm going to be such a homer here and give it to Timpan and Ogus' offensive line. Okay. They're unsung. They were able to protect in passing situations, they were able to open up the lanes in the run game. Shout out to each one of those those young men that really are, I think, they're just uh, unsung heroes. They were great tonight against the Salem Hills defense that likes to get around and fly, but they were grounded thanks to the O-line tonight of Timpanogos. 35-14, Timpanogos with the win. For Addison Kerr, Eric Glitzter, my name is Dane Stewart. I want to thank you for joining us here for Tim and Ogus Football, presented by Brent Brown Toyota on the Rewind Sports Network. And a reminder, you can join us the rest of the ways. We take you all the way to state championships right here on KSL Sports Rewind. For everyone here, have a great night. We'll see you next time on KSL Sports Rewind's Game of the Week. Good night, everybody.